this is Cookie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you two of the DIY kits I recently got. And the reason I'm so excited is because spring is around the corner, it's getting warmer and warmer, and I'm really looking forward to decorating my room. Both of these things, if they come out nicely, will give a nice touch to my apartment. So I'm very excited to get started on this project and share it with you. First things first, let me open both packages for you. might have guessed by now these are needle felting kits this one is used to make a little bird and the other one that I'm going to open up on the other side is for a duck so I'll be making a duck and a bird with these two needle felting kits the reason why I got needle felting kits as opposed to buying everything in larger quantities is because this is much cheaper. And since it's the first time that I'm making those, I thought it made sense to get the cheapest package I got in case I mess it up completely and never want to do it again, I didn't spend that much money on the individual things. As you can see, each of the sets came with the corresponding items needed. For the duck, the body will be white, then the beak yellow, and there's some grey, I'm not sure for what we will see. And there are obviously the needles that will be needed to put the whole thing together. This sponge-like thing is what we'll be using for needle felting so that you don't destroy your surface underneath. I got this really nice cutting mat that I always use when I do anything DIY related to protect my desk wherever I work. It doesn't cost much, so if you are into DIY, I strongly suggest you get one of these cutting mats because it's just nice to keep everything tidy underneath. And that's for the deck. On the other side, we have the little bird. The bird will be white and brown. It also has a piece of felt to be cut, I suppose. Some glue. And then I see this and I'm very excited because this looks like a pom-pom machine to me. So somehow this will be integrated in the process. We will see how that goes. And there are all sorts of little accessories. So I'm looking forward to finding out how this is going to work out. Because I love ducks, I decided to start with the duck. I hope the bird isn't too offended. And let me put all the bird elements to one side. So that we don't get them mixed up. And let me get started with the duck. Now the way this works is you have to cut the white fabric in half. I looked up some instructions so I'm going to stick to one of those that I thought made the most sense to me. Now here we have some yellow and grey and let me get out the needle. If you're wondering what this black rope is for, it is a duck that is sitting on a swing so this will be used to make the swing. At the very beginning, what is the most important from my research, I'm not a pro, so if I do something wrong, please bear with me and excuse my faults, is to not take too much and to spread everything apart. Just make sure it's really messy. Apparently it looks much better if you've messed around with the wool a bit more before starting. Now I've got a huge white ball and the most important thing when you start is to envision what you want to make, in my case a duck. So I need the body part and the head, that's my aim. Try to work towards that direction. Obviously it won't be exactly the way you want it and there's a lot of fabric left in order to keep modifying it so don't worry too much but try to work in that direction and not to do something that is completely different and out of shape. The second thing you should know is that this is very sharp, so try to not have your fingers anywhere near it when you start using a needle. And I hope my fingers will all still be there at the end of the day. This top part will be the head, and that will be the body. In 
in order not to make this video too boring, I decided to speed things up a bit. You're going to see me putting this little duck together. As you can see, I cut a few pieces. Now I'm onto the wings. There are two wings from either side, or you can just call them the arms. I'm not sure how you refer to those when you refer to ducks. I'm no biologist. And these are the little feet. Once you're done with both feet, it's time to get ready and put everything together. Just make sure not to hurt yourself using the needle. I have to admit that I accidentally punched myself a couple of times with the needle, especially in the beginning. Please be careful. Next, I used some of the yellow wool to make the beak. That was actually quite easy because it's very small and very flat. Once you're satisfied with the beak, the last step is to put it on top of its face. Make sure to spend some time securing it, otherwise it is likely going to fall off pretty quickly. I decided to add on some contrast in order to make the beak a bit more realistic. That includes this really fine line that I put on top of the beak, as well as the two nostrils that are really tiny dots that I put on top. I think it gives it a more realistic touch, although it's a bit tricky to get them on. Once you have accomplished the task with the beak, the next step is to get the feet ready. The feet work pretty much like the beak, they're very flat. Make sure that there's enough space to put in some wire in between. That is going to be the part that you're going to stick into the existing leg of the duck. Make sure to add on some glue when you do that and use the needle as necessary to make everything fit together a bit better. Now this step is really cute, you can flap around the feet because you put in that wire initially and you are ready to add on the eyes. The eyes are pretty much the last step. The last thing that remains to be done is to place the duck onto its swing. And once you've secured that, the duck is ready to start its swing adventure. What do you think of my first duck made out of a felt knitting kit? Doesn't it look adorable? I pretty much like it. I decided to put on some extra needles so that the swing is tightly in between the wings or the arms of the little duck. And here you have a quick overview of what my little duck looks like in the end. Let me know what you think. Can't wait. Ta-da! I'm very happy with this since it is the first time that I've used one of these needle felting kits. Definitely try it out. It didn't take too much time and it was quite nice and relaxing to actually use the needle all the time. I enjoyed making this little duck and I'm going to show you where I'm going to position it in a bit. I might come up with a better idea, but for now I put it next to the air conditioner. Doesn't it seem happy there? Duck. Let's put it over here while I'm working on the second one, the little bird. The bird is a bit different from what I read. Let's get our tools ready. Open everything up. Here's the pom pom maker. Very excited about that since I'm an avid pom pom fan. Sorry if I looked far too serious for making a bird. Anyway, that's my face when I make a pom-pom. And as you can see, that's what the pom-pom looks like. Use some scissors in order to tweak it into the position that you'd like to have. For me, since this is a little bird, make sure that the pom-pom represents the body part as well as the head, with the head being much smaller than the body. And then continue to put on some color. As you can see in the back, there's some black color as well as some brownish color. I decided to put on some extra frizzy stuff on top just to make it look a bit more creative. You can do that or you can leave it if you don't like it as much. Then it is time to cut out the little wings. They are out of black felt. Once you're done with that, you can stick them on with some glue. It's pretty easily done. And the bird is slowly coming together. I decided to cut off some of the frizziness because it just got a bit too much for my taste. You can do as you wish. The last step is to put an additional feather thingy from the bottom just to give it its overall look. Then add on the feet. The feet I cut out myself so they're not perfectly symmetrical but you can live with it. It's not too bad.
and in the last step as always just add on the eyes both eyes at a symmetrical angle together with the nose and the little bird is ready to go well, as you can see i ended up hiding all the frizziness that i implemented earlier for some reason i changed my opinion and thought it looks much better like that without any frizziness attached to the back and i'm giving you a quick 360 degree overview of what the bird looks like in the end i hope you like it Ta-da! And here's my little bird. What do you think of it? I'm absolutely in love with it. It looks so cute. I don't know which one I like more, the duck or the bird. Let me know what you think. And I loved it so much, I decided to come up with a different model of a duck myself. Here we go. So we have a little duck, a big duck and a little bird. I think I'm going to keep going with this because it's so easy. And quite a lot of my friends have seen those and want one as well, so I might have to get cracking to get enough birds and ducks together. I thought you might enjoy seeing what the little duck looks like. As I said, after making the big duck, I had some leftovers and that's how this little duck came into being. As you know, both ducks are sitting on a swing, which has the advantage that you can hang them anywhere in the apartment, for instance on a light fixture. Same goes for the second duck, as you can see it sits on its little swing and you can hang it anywhere. I like the idea of having it hanging in the apartment as opposed to putting it somewhere because my space is quite limited and I don't have that many spaces to put things like these. Talking about light fixtures, let me try it out right away. As you might remember from my living room makeover, I have a spider lamp and that is an awesome thing to have in your apartment. Why? Because you can hang all sorts of things to your spider lamp as you can see. For the little bird, I decided not to put it on a swing because I already had two swings and I think that's enough. So this one might just go next to my window and it's small enough not to take up too much space so I think I can work with this one. I absolutely recommend getting a kit first and figuring it out. These kits, since I got them on sale, were really cheap and worth it. But most of the time, it's much cheaper to get the things individually. So once you've figured out that you like these sort of things, you can just get the colors that you need in bulk and it will be much cheaper. Alternatively, you can just do what I did and watch out for all sorts of sales and whenever a sale comes up, you can just go for it and then it's also very cheap to do. I highly recommend you trying these things out. If you do have a free afternoon on a Saturday or a Sunday, it's absolutely worth it and your friends will love the projects that come out of this. Thanks for your time. This was a very short video today. I hope you liked it anyway. And if you would like to see more videos like that, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Bye.